Hello and welcome to uh, the How University course, Wireframes and Prototypes for Interactive Design. My name is Patrick McNeil and I won't uh, give any kind of great long in-depth uh, introduction about myself. Uh, if you've had one of my previous courses and you're probably um, pretty pretty uh, familiar with the format we're going to have. If not, then uh, I, and I'm excited that you're joining us for the first time and uh, hopefully you will enjoy uh, the, the approach I have to teaching this material. Um, of course, in this uh, four-week course, we're going to focus on wireframes and prototypes, um, which to some might seem a little excessive to do four weeks on just this topic, but I think you'll discover that uh, not only is there a lot, uh, lot of uh, good thought that we can put into how we do these uh, various things, but that uh, looking at and considering how they can be used and the purposes and all these various things, um, there's actually a lot of ground to explore. And I think in four weeks, you're going to find that uh, we cover a lot of tools and uh, resources and ideas that will prove to be not only useful, but immediately tangible. Like there is no reason you can't almost immediately start applying these ideas. And it hopefully will change the way you approach work. So real brief uh, weekly overview. Of course, week one, we're going to introduce wireframes prototypes and focus mostly just on uh, wireframes. Week two, we're going to focus on prototyping, in particular paper prototyping, and see how that all works out. Week three, we'll move into um, considering how to apply this to the world of responsive web design, because frankly, uh, that's one of the most problematic areas for this type of uh, activity, I guess, right, is how do we do those things for responsive web design. And so I've got uh, what I think is a fairly good solution that I've been uh, using with students for a while, and uh, I think uh, you'll find it quite effective. And then finally in week four, we're going to look at a variety of other tools because uh, the reality is the industry has not agreed on a single way or method of doing um, wireframes and prototypes. So there's many tools. We'll uh, kind of cover a range of them. And then we'll finish week four off by looking at some basic sort of methodologies for testing our prototypes and kind of some basic ideas to lead you into uh, the world of usability testing and uh, testing your actual prototype. Uh, there are two pieces of software we're going to use. They're both, uh, you'll be able to get both of them for free. One's called POP. Um, I forget what POP stands for. It's like paper proto some paper something prototyping. Um, or prototyping on paper, maybe. I'm not sure what it stands for. Anyway, it lets you easily transform paper prototypes into clickable, um, touch usable mobile interfaces. So it works on Android, iPhone and Android. It's totally free. So we're going to use that. Um, so hopefully you have one of those two phones. If you don't, um, it's not a huge part of the course, but uh, it's certainly uh, kind of something you'll have to miss out on, I guess. Um, the other thing we'll use is I'll actually focus on Axure a little bit, which is a nice wireframing and prototyping tool. They do offer a 30-day demo, so if you don't have that software, feel free to go get the demo when the time comes. I'd wait until week three when we start to use it so that you don't, um, so that your 30 days starts then, right? That we'd buy, that's two weeks from now, so that would buy you a little extra time. Now, if you happen to be in the world of education, you can actually, um, you can actually request a free license. So if you happen to be a teacher or a student, then uh, you should start that process and see if you can't get a free license. So otherwise, uh, you should have everything that you need for this. Um, that's the only real software we'll need. And then there's one book. If you haven't gotten it already, it's super short. It's extremely thin. It's like a quarter of an inch thick. Um, some of the material in this course is kind of based on this. I mean, it's a whole book on prototyping, so it's like perfect for what we're doing. There are a few things, I don't want to say it's dated, but it's already a few years old and the technology has changed quickly enough um, that the software solutions they propose aren't necessarily quite the same as they were or they are now, right? That's changed a little bit in the four years since the book was published. However, the basic ideas that they present are extremely uh, sound and useful, and that's a lot of what we'll be looking at. So I highly encourage you to get this book and to read it. Uh, the material in this course will make that much more sense and probably be, be that much more um, effective in terms of you uh, learning the material. So that's what I have in, guide, in store for you for this uh, next uh, coming month. Uh, so with that, uh, I guess I'll end the conclusion and we'll uh, jump in and start looking at things.